All right, we're back in Mung Fung here on the farm. Day three, well, really day two. Got here Friday night and, whew, can we see me? <laughs> there we are. And now it's Sunday and we're back on the farm. Hopefully get some drone footage and yeah, enjoy another day here on the farm. The food's been amazing. It's been incredible being here with these guys. They've been just the most hospitable people you can imagine. And this evening, we'll go teach the kids again. Last night was a blast. So I, I need to get working so I can get the sweat out of my face. <laughs> see you soon. See you soon means see you now. Cause here we go. We're gonna make, see if we can make one of these on camera. Like it matters. But, heck, it's not every day I get to come and do this. Damn. We'll take about that much. You can see how I've become a professional in only one day. <laughs> if that were only true. There you go! Hey yo! Farming Ninja! The Mong Farm Ninja is back at it again. There's people farming up there, guys. And he told me yesterday, well, may as well have it as a backdrop. Or why don't we have this beautiful mountain as our backdrop? He told me yesterday that people up there farming, they used to carry everything from the top to the bottom. That looks like backbreaking work. It's already hard enough right here. Like I'm not, I haven't even, I did one bundle. Guys, I'm breathing hard just from being out here in, in the heat. And not that, I'm not really out of shape, I wouldn't say. So you can imagine if you're going up and down those hills, but he asked me if I had a better idea because what they figured out to do was they made a pulley system, tied ropes up to the tall trees at the top tree at the bottom and then through the bundles of uh, actually not the bundles but that we was talking about the planting so when you plant you they grow yay high or whatever I'm not showing it right but they grow yay high then they have to transport them I wondered for a long time why do you need to transport I think what it is is that when you plant the rice you just I almost used the word one you just like spread the seeds out everywhere let it grow and then once it gets to I want to say like not even a foot and a half two feet something like that then you transport it so they actually have the proper amount of room between them to grow so when what they did up there is they pull the rice out that's already started and they stick them on the pulley and send it down down to the other fields Pretty ingenious. He asked me if I had a better idea. <laughs> hey, I'm probably not the probably not the guy for that. Just their whole family's been here. They came on the weekend to help harvest, which is very normal for Lao and local people or Hmong people to have their whole family come and help harvest. And he said that they'll harvest about 100 bags of rice, only about 20 of which will be sticky rice, is what he told me, and then. Uh, the rest is just regular white jasmine rice. And that will last them a year. Now, I'm trying to calculate the amount of man hours that they put into that. And, uh, yeah, my math sucks. So, just imagine this is days, weeks and weeks on end of planting, transporting. To, I, I don't even know all the steps, but I'm just thinking this is like, gotta be months of work to be able to eat for the year now and that's just the rice so I don't know if we can compare that to anything back home I'm, I'm drawing a blank but that's also because I'm sweating my tits off here I, I'm ready to work 
Let's go for it. Chicken in tow. <laughs> Made it back from the farm. About ready to wash these soaking wet clothes and prepare my lessons. Came back a little earlier than everybody else because yesterday didn't really have any time to prepare. Lessons went well, but I wanted to have a little bit better preparation this time around for the children and a second to just cool off from the heat so here we are back home and uh yeah got the puppies following me everywhere oh hello baby come here darling come here come here hello buddy hello 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 <laughs> Gotta love farm life. Yang Hey! Hello! Yang Hello! How many are coming? Let's see. We filled the classroom yesterday and the day before. Let's see. All right. Time for class. Hello. Time to teach. How are you? I am fine. Very good. We finished our three classes for the night, and I probably looked like I, I didn't have that much fun, but <laughs> I had a blast. I really do hope there's more opportunities like this that uh, I can go out into the countryside. This was so incredible just to come out here and to be able to do do what we did for the last three days and teach the kids. One, one point I like to make though is that I don't, I don't take much film of what we're doing here because I think there's a very fine balance between sharing what you're doing and, you know, not, not being respectful of this is people's lives that you're filming and especially with children. So. I think a lot of YouTubers are kind of gross out there that they just film whatever is going to get them views or make them popular or whatever that whatever they're doing especially travelers coming through small countries like Laos just stick the camera in people's faces and you know and make money off of them basically and I just think it's pretty gross so I try not to film too much even though people are like yeah it's cool just film 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 and you know, it's a tough one because I do think like you share what you're doing, there's an opportunity to 
help people by having more people know what's going on. Even since I've been here, I haven't filmed us at the dinner table. I haven't filmed some of the more intimate things that are very interesting and I love observing and being a part of it, but but how do you do that when, and still keep the respect that should be there? Like what I see a lot is people sticking the camera on people's faces like they're at the zoo. So let me know what you think. When people actually start watching these videos, then let me know what you guys think about this dilemma and, and how to go about it in a tactful way. If, yeah, the kids are amazing. I really wish you filmed the last class especially. Too. It was so much fun there. I could just imagine myself being out in one of these small villages teaching and the kids would be speaking English fluently in a couple of months, you know. It would be incredible, an incredible experience. But until then, I'm gonna keep looking for opportunities. This is awesome, I, I really enjoyed it. If anybody's out there and knows of uh, opportunities to come stay for th a couple of days all over the weekend, three or four days, something like that, I do have to go back to my job and work uh, in Vientiane until one day we can make this, you know, make this happen. So until next time, guys.